Good morning, guys. Today we are headed to one of my favorite shows in the world, The Quail. I am so stoked to be in Car Week, guys. Just being here puts me in such a great mood. Wow, Shelby Daytona Coupe. Into the quail we go. One of the most anticipated reveals at Quail is the new Countach. That is under wraps right there, and in about 35 minutes, we're gonna see the covers taken off. But check out this stand. We got the beautiful Huracan STO. And then next to it, we've got the SC V12, which is a race car. So you can't drive it on the road, but you can't actually compete in races. So it's kind of like the Ferrari FXXK. Based on the Aventador, it makes 819 horsepower and weighs just over 3,000 pounds. That looks absolutely stunning, but I can't wait to see what's underneath this cover. Pagani always has a show-stopping display at the Quail. Check out all of these Wyras next to each other. Check out how many absolutely breathtaking cars are in this section. They've never done this before. This is called the evolution of the supercar and there are some serious heavy hitters. Starting with this gorgeous Porsche 935. This is one of my favorite Porsches they've ever made. And then check this out. We got a XJ220 followed by an SLS AMG. Nice Countach, SLR. P1. Look at the carbon fiber work on this P1. Wow. That is sweet. Then 720S, 570. And then check this out, guys. We got the McLaren Elva, except this one has the optional windshield, which honestly I wouldn't do. If you're going to get an Elva, the coolest part about the car is the fact that it doesn't have a windshield. Always a great day seeing an F40. And then next to it, a Zonda. I am absolutely in love with this car, particularly the rear end. This is called the Project Sandbox, and it's actually based on a 992 Turbo S, except RUF has upped the horsepower to 750, and it's got design language that's based on the 959. So when we come around the side, look how spectacular that looks, and I love the rear end of this car. Wow. First time seeing the SSC Tuatara in person. 5.9 liter twin turbocharged V8, 1,750 horsepower, and it only weighs 2,750 pounds. I gotta say, in person, I do really like the way this thing looks. Nice Brabus E65. That car made 450 horsepower in 1997. They need to make a new E65. Check out the engine bay inside of the E65. Another absolute performance monster, the 959. This car did zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds back in 1986. And then next to it, look at that, 300 SL Gullwing. Looks like in completely original condition. Another really cool car that you don't see very often, the Saline S7. Looks absolutely wild. And then next to that, we've got the AMG GTR Speed Legend. There's only five of these in the world, and they come without a roof or a windshield. How cool is that? Look at all the carbon fiber structural components. Whew. That is such a cool looking car. Fully exposed carbon Ford GT. Look at the weave on this thing. Wow. Here's a super unique car I've never seen before. This is called the Oletha Prototype. Now, it's based on an M Coupe, but it's been completely reworked with carbon fiber bodywork to kind of look like a sportier version of the Z8. One of the coolest parts is it's got the S65 V8 from the E92, making 450 horsepower. So it's a more athletic track-focused version of a Z8, and I absolutely love that. This event is actually so classy, it's absurd. Check this out, guys. The Chiron Super Sport, 1,577 horsepower, built to commemorate the car that broke the 300 mile an hour speed barrier. It's got a longer rear end, different exhaust. I absolutely love the way the back of this car looks. And some new details up at the front as well, particularly this vent and these holes look awesome. First time seeing the Bugatti Bolide in person, 1,825 horsepower. They shaved 1,600 pounds off the curb weight of a Chiron, and apparently it's capable of lapping the Nürburgring in five minutes and 25 seconds. The looks of this are out of this world. 
Look at the rear wing and rear end of the Bolid. I love that X-wing style design. Koenigsegg stealing the show as per usual. Let's check out the Gamera. I've actually never seen the interior of one of these in person. How cool is this? A four-seater hypercar. This is such a good looking car. I absolutely love how long the door is because it is a four seater. It's such a dramatic look. We've also got the Yesco Absolute. And then next to it, Dan's Regera. Well, they're about to unveil the Countach. Let's check it out. Buongiorno and welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lamborghini. In uh, the year 1971, so 50 years ago, uh, there was the launch of the Countach. And uh, it was a car which was a game changer, but not only for uh, Lamborghini, also uh, for the entire automotive uh, super sports car industry. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Good car. We have a super capacitor. Uh, which is attached to the gearbox, which is delivering three times more power than a normal uh, battery. The original internal number of the project for the Countach was 112. So this is the reason why we are going to produce this car only 112 times. And guess what? They are all sold. So it's very positive for us and for the brand that uh, these cars are all sold. Over there. Check this out guys, the new Countach, and I have to say in person, it does look a heck of a lot better than in pictures. Check out the rear of the Countach, very similar lights and rear end to the Sion. I gotta be honest, from the back, not a huge fan, but the front does look pretty epic. The side vent on the Countach almost reminds me of an Aventador mixed with a 570S. The front of this though actually looks amazing and resembles the original Countach in person a lot more than I was expecting. Well, that was definitely very cool to see. Is it $2 million cool? No, but I can't afford the car and they're all sold out anyway, so <laughs> good job Lamborghini. It's really cool though that they did bring back a retro car and make it modern. More manufacturers need to do that. We are here with Nathan, the design director for the Hennessy F5. This car is stunning, so congratulations. What, what can you tell me about it? Well, we're super excited about it. Um, this is the, the golden venom is what we're calling it. It's an incredible tank color, Mojave gold. Um, you know, this car is all about proportion. It's got the, the classic hypercar proportion cab forward, uh, greenhouse. Um, but the really cool thing about this project was that we're creating a brand new design DNA, design language. And if we go to the front of the car, if you look at the headlights, it's actually in the shape of an F for the Venom F5. So when it lights up, you've got an F signifying that it's a Hennessy car. And same thing with the rear. It's very distinct. Um, couldn't be more happy with it. And uh, we can't wait for everyone else to see it. Take a look at the steering wheel in the Venom F5. So when we were designing the interior, this car is going a two-way average of over 300 miles an hour, right? At that speed, you're less of a driver and you're actually more of a pilot. And so that is what the inspiration was for the whole interior of the car. So you actually more have a yoke than you do a steering wheel. So that's why it looks the way it does. And every control is on there. That is way cool. It's like a Formula One car mixed with a Tesla Model S Plaid steering wheel. Although this came out before the Tesla. Yes, it did. <laughs> Check this out guys, so most of you have seen the absolutely gorgeous Gunther Works Porsche. But this is their latest creation, the 993 Speedster, and it looks absolutely insane. Check out the interior on this thing. 
doesn't have a top, which makes the looks extremely dramatic, but I absolutely love these seats, the color, the carbon fiber. Got some extra storage under here. 430 horsepower, naturally aspirated flat six, carbon barrels on the wheels with magnesium inserts. And their goal with this car, despite the fact that it doesn't have a top, is to be faster around Laguna Seca than the previous car. Wow, look at this lineup of Fords coming through. Well, in stark contrast to those old V8 muscle cars, we've got this, the Pininfarina Batista, finally in its production spec. And I have to say, this is probably the best looking electric car, at least in the top three ever made. This thing makes 1900 horsepower and does zero to 60 in under two seconds. Look at the interior of this thing. I love that rear spoiler. 1937 Bugatti 57S. Look at this thing. Wow. Gorgeous Segato next to it. Wow, I love the fenders on this. Another absolutely spectacular all-electric hypercar, the Lotus Evaya, 1,972 horsepower. Didn't realize the doors closed themselves automatically. That's pretty cool. I love the back of the Avaya. Lotus did an amazing job with the new Amira. I actually love the way this looks. And then check this out. I actually don't know what it is, but really cool looking. These cars never get old to look at. It is just an absolute piece of art. And look at this roof scoop shark fin. That is so cool. Blue interior, interesting. Well, this is always one of the craziest cars ever. McLaren P1 with the Lanzanti high downforce kit. Basically a road legal P1 GTR. <laughs> Look at the rear of this. Now the color of this car is actually Verde Hermes, which is a Lamborghini color. And then on the inside, it uses a Ferrari color for the leather. So we've got a Ferrari interior, a McLaren car, and a Lamborghini paint. How unique is that? The Glickenhaus car, always wild to see. Love those doors. Look at this 67 Ferrari 206 Sport prototype. Nice TDF. Familiar spec on this Speciale Aperta. Oh, I miss this car. Cool lineup, 16M, 288 GTO, and F40. What do you guys think on the new McLaren Artura? I actually really like the design of this car. Let's take a look at the interior. You know a car show is absolutely insane when the parking lot just to pick up tickets is a car show in itself. Check this out, we got a gorgeous Pista, lovely Aventador Roadster, GT2 RS, we got the VF STO, and look at this, casually parked 918 Spider. And on the other side, a gorgeous McLaren Elva in this dark purple color. Wow, I really like the white interior with the purple exterior. Pretty SF90. Well, there you guys have it. Quail was epic as per usual. Let's see what else the day has in store. Headed now to downtown Monterey to the Portola Hotel garage. Now you wouldn't think a parking garage would be a great place for car spotting, but because there's the RM auctions there, there is some epic cars in the garage at the Portola. Like Ocean Avenue, it's a great spot to find random cars. Same with 17 Mile Drive and the Carmel Valley Ranch Hotel has some crazy cars staying there too. How cute is this, guys? It's a miniature F40. That is dope. Some crazy cars going up for auction at RM. Check this out, beautiful Koenigsegg CCX. We've got a Speedtail behind it, a Saline S7, LFA, and then look at this. Check this out, the first public sale of a Zonda R ever. Roof scoop goals, what I would do for that car. So, like I said, this parking garage is nuts, the amount of random cars you find in here. Look at this, Diablo GT, just casually parked next to that Ford. Gorgeous purple Pista, 
with a license plate that says Pista on it. I stand corrected, it's actually a Diablo GTR. Whew, look at the exhaust on that. Casual Ford GT, chilling there. Well, we're not allowed down there apparently, but check that out. There's the McLaren F1 and two priceless Ferraris. First F50 of the trip, next to an EB110, a beautiful GTR, and an XJ220. The color on this F8 absolutely pops. Look at that. Clean Supra. Wow. I don't know if that's real or not, but holy crap. Nice spec pista. Casual traffic finds. Black Series for days out here. Another Black Series. LFA. Oh! Look at the size of that wing. Headed to Carmel Valley Ranch. Got Idolo in the car with me. And behind us, Jake is in a rented Camaro because, well, we're gonna try to figure out the status of the Supra tonight, but it doesn't seem good. Pretty much everything is pointing to the fact that the turbo is blown. We're gonna try to figure it out. Uh, Mitch from Avant Garde Exotics is awesome, even though obviously it's his time off out here at Car Week. He is gonna take a look at it and try to help out. So there's a gate at the front of Carmel Valley Ranch Hotel. We just drove right through, and then right after they shut the gate on Jake. I guess uh, they deemed he wasn't staying here just because he had a Camaro. That's kind of ridiculous. Well, that's casual. A Gear RS just parked randomly. Pretty epic spec Koenigsegg. Wow. For a very long time, this was my favorite car, hands down, in the world. Still definitely in the top three. Baby Blue 812 GTS. I can imagine this thing sounds incredible with the top down. We got Whitess's Zonda. How crazy is the valet parking at Carmel Valley. Got Wyra's, Wyra BC's. Oh my gosh, I love this matte black one with the white interior. That is cool. And then a pair of SF90s over here. These Paganis actually look absurd. <laughs> the rear end of this car is insane. I love that titanium exhaust. Look at the aero flaps, that scoop. It's pretty funny seeing a Ferrari plugged in <laughs> to a Charger. My dad's Ford GT parked here at the hotel. Check out this license plate though. <laughs> F you Enzo. All right, either this is about to turn out amazing or it's going to be terrible. So we're gonna find out either way. I'm about to drive the Supra about 10 minutes to go meet up with Mitch from AGX and he's gonna inspect the car, fingers crossed. The crazy part is there's no check engine light and I don't understand that whatsoever. Well, so far so good. If I'm not on the gas whatsoever, it doesn't build boost. Hope it makes it. <laughs> 